Why is editing important? If you ask any professional filmmaker, they will tell you that the story is told three times, in writing, in filming and in editing. This is because each part of the filmmaking process is so diverse that the way you go about making the film can have a huge impact on the way it makes the audience feel. This is particularly true in editing, as depending on the order of the clips, the pacing of the editing and sound added to the visuals, the editor can manipulate the audience to feel a particular emotion. Editing can change the entire story based on the order and choice of the clips. When rearranged, a lot of films can have an entirely different outcome. This is an example from Pirates of the Caribbean. In this scene, the audience is led to believe that Elizabeth Swan gets shot here by Captain Barbosa. However, we soon realise that it's actually Jack that has shot Captain Barbosa. However, when rearranged, we can make it look as if Jack has shot Elizabeth and Captain Barbosa is simply a bystander to the situation. But as we all know, this is the actual outcome. The first films to be made consisted of things that the filmmakers thought were interesting. The first film screening was shown in a basement of a French cafe in December 1895 by the Lumiere brothers and was just a film about people leaving a factory. The films were very long and lasted either until the filmmaker got bored or the film reel ran out. People lost interest in the films as they only contained things you could see in the street anyway. In 1901, Edwin S. Porter showed that film didn't have to just be one long shot and he used footage to tell a story instead of just showing one. Porter was also the first filmmaker to create a continuity sequence. D.W. Griffith is considered to be the first modern filmmaker after his release of A Birth of a Nation in 1915, which made use of advanced camera and narrative techniques which opened up new opportunities for filmmakers to tell their stories as well. It was also the first film to use techniques such as close-ups, flashbacks and parallel actions. Also his film For Love of Gold in 1908 featured the first ever continuity cut. In 1920, Les Kulshov invented what we now know as a montage. Kulshov created an experiment using his montage technique. He created three scenarios, each using the same piece of footage of a man's facial expressions. In the first scenario, they were shown a bowl of soup and then the man's face, and the audience said that the man felt hungry. In the second scenario, the man's facial expressions were paired up with a little girl in a coffin, and the audience said that the man felt remorseful. And then in the last scenario, a clip of a woman was used, and the audience said that the man looked lustful. He created the effect because he believed that the audience would respond better to it than the stereotypical films that were being made at the time. It was first introduced to filmmaking by Eisenstein and Zyger Vertov. The montage was first used in Eisenstein's film Battleship Potemkin. Before the digital days, movies were made on rolls of film and were edited by using cutting machines that could cut and stick film together to create the cuts that we now take for granted. In 1985, Quantel released the Harry, which was the first all-digital video editing and effects compositing system. It could only record and apply effects to a maximum of 80 seconds of 8-bit uncompressed digital video. How has editing impacted modern filmmaking? The history of editing has had a huge impact on how we make films today. The original techniques that were discovered as filmmaking started have laid the foundations for modern filmmakers to build on and create more advanced visual displays. Some of the techniques used have opened up new opportunities to tell a story and they still get used today as recognised techniques. Others are now viewed as cliched and are still recognisable but are rarely used in modern filmmaking. The history of the art has opened doorways to making more technically advanced films and have shaped the industry forever. Even though we now have cuts, many films use a technique known as one takes, in which the footage often isn't cut for several minutes and is filmed on a dolly or steady cam. This is an example of a one take from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. In this shot, Spielberg insisted that there were no cuts which would draw out the action in the scene more. Since George Melier's original use of practical and visual effects, we have now expanded the original simplicity of the shots to complete computer-generated effects in modern films such as The Hobbit. This scene is an example of a shot that is 100% computer-generated. Edwin Porter's continuity editing is still used today and is even frowned upon when ignored as it often breaks the audience's immersion. For this reason, bad continuity is seen as an amateur mistake and is a sign of inexperience, however even Hollywood films have examples of continuity errors in them. This is an example from Lord of the Rings in which Merry and Pippin set off a firework in a tent. As you can see in this shot, there are lots of things in the tent, however as soon as the tent takes off with the firework, you can see that all the objects inside the tent, bar Merry and Pippin, actually disappear. These kind of mistakes are often frowned upon as it reminds the audience that they're just watching a film. D.W. Griffith's match on action is still used to hide editing today and the technique has not changed since the use of film. It still involves combining two shots to mask the edit in order to make the audience forget they're watching a film. This is an example from The Avengers in which the Hulk is smashing Loki around into the floor. As you can see, when the shots change, Loki and the Hulk are still in the same position and pose, but the angle has changed. Eisenstein's montage technique is still used in modern film constantly. It is often used now to show the passing of time as it can display lots of events over a small amount of time and it has the potential to convey a lot of information. Trailers often employ this technique as they show lots of the best bits of the film in order to entice the audience. For this example I'm just using the latest Harry Potter trailer. So that's an overview of the history of editing, thank you very much for watching this video.